Wilson. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trodden underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it. And other seed fell on the rock. And as it grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture. And some fell into thorns. And the thorns grew up with it and choked it. And some fell into good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is a story of the time when all Western civilization was enslaved by the might of Imperial Rome. From the Rhine to the Nile, from the Atlantic to the deserts beyond the Jordan, the nations bowed in helpless submission to the legions of the empire. Yet in every vassal state, there were men who clung to the dream of freedom, struck back at their oppressors, planned unceasingly to cast off the yoke of slavery. In the land of Israel, those who dared were known as the Zealots. This was Jerusalem in the 18th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar. Uh, that shop is closed. The owner is gone. Stay where you are. So, the first bird flies into our trap. Trap? Is it against the law to buy a measure of spice? Only when the merchant has been identified as a traitor, and a leader of traitors. Search him. I know nothing of traitors. I came here peacefully for the Passover feast. My wife told me to bring back some spices which aren't to be had, now... <laughs>
and claws. Water, this man's been hurt. Bring him some wine. Is the cut deep? Does it stop bleeding? What's happened? Roman's almost caught in a sword slash. Did Zedop get here? Not yet. Thank the Lord you're alive. And all of you. Is it a serious wound? I've forgotten worse. We'd both have had worse if it weren't for this man. Huh? He saved us from Pilate's dogs. Now he needs a hiding place, so I brought him here. You're welcome. More than welcome. We're old acquaintances. Zadok, the spice merchant. What we have, such as it is, is yours. Booney, some wine for our guest. Food, too, if he wishes it. Now, Aaron. I brought 80 men, good men. They're hidden in the hills above Betha. What do you want them to do and when? Nothing. Not now. Nothing? It's not our fault we're late. Your messenger was delayed. We've marched day and night. I know. All the way from the border of Sinai. Some of you have come even farther, but... our plan failed. What plan? Why? Why, Why did it fail? We have a right to know. Am I to tell my men turn around go home without an explanation? When you rejoin your men, tell them they weren't summoned for a trivial matter. Tell them that if things had gone differently, we'd have broken Rome's hold on Israel completely. One twist of fate. And today's sun would have dawned on a nation freed of bondage, united under a new king, a king of our own choosing. came so close to success. So very close. It all began three years ago in the valley of the Jordan. I had gone there, as had many others, to hear a certain man. A man called John the Baptist. Your sins have hid his face from you so that he does not hear. Turn back to the Lord Jehovah, you who have strayed. Give witness to him. Repent your sins. For the day of his coming is near. And woe unto those who are not prepared. He's a crook of doom. We plot to overthrow the powers of Rome, not those of sin. But he has a gift we can use. Every leadership. Man, be he slave or free man, peasant or prince, subject or king, yea, even Herod Antipas, whom we call Tetrarch, revels in sin and debauchery, flaunts his false marriage with the woman he took from his brother. He may have leadership, but he certainly lacks judgment. Even Only a fool would shout accusations against Herod so publicly. As he needs an advisor, someone able to lead him, guide him, perhaps in time control him. You have the shrewdness. He has the spark that kindles men. Open their hearts to repentance. Grant them redemption from thy wrath. Grant them the gift of thy forgiveness. Thou who art all-powerful, all-knowing, almighty. Come. Come, step forward. In the name of the Lord thy God. Come. Jehovah. Are you hurt? No. No, I have a very 
hard head. And a stout heart. I'm deeply grateful to you and your friend. But I don't even know your name. He is Zadok, a spice merchant of Jerusalem. And I am Andrew Barjonas, fisherman from Galilee. And you? My name is Judas. Judas Iscariot. With no hope of using the Baptist to our advantage, I sent Judas westward on minor matters concerning the Brotherhood. And I traveled south to Jerusalem. You, Andrew, you returned to Galilee. Yes. Back to my brother and our fishing boat. The days became weeks, the weeks a month, and more. Then one day, while we were hanging our nets by the Sea of Galilee, Good day, Andrew. Hello. You know my name. I saw you by the Jordan. You're the Nazarene. Simon! James! John! Come here! Well, this is Jesus Bar-Joseph, the man from Nazareth. Oh? My brother, Simon Bar-Jonas. Simon? And our friends, James and John Bar-Zebedee. You're the carpenter. No more. No longer will I labor with wood. Now my work is with mankind. This new task you've undertaken, this work with men. I bring them hope, new hope. For the kingdom of God is close at hand. And his forgiveness ready for all who repent and truly believe. Just as the Baptist predicted. If there's anything I can do, that we can do to help you. Uh, not that we're teachers or preachers, we're just fishermen. Follow me. I will make you fishers of men. From that day on, we followed him, not asking why we did, knowing only that we wanted to, more than any other thing. We heard him preach in our own synagogue in Capernaum, reading the Torah, as expertly as a scribe, interpreting the laws so clearly that all men marveled at his knowledge and authority. We followed him along the roads of Galilee to the villages, towns, and cities. We learned that the gift of healing lay in his hands, that gentleness and compassion for all men filled his heart. Wherever he spoke, the people listened. Many followed him from village to village. Among them, the man Judas, never entering into the discussions, but always studying the master intently. As the master's fame increased, so did his followers. But certain Pharisees, who considered themselves authorities on the religious law, resented him bitterly. Why do you let them break the traditions of the elders? Would you destroy all that is holy, all that is sacred? Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. Oh, no. Hear me. Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a man which by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a man are what defile him. with humble respect. It is possible 
Our search for a leader of the downtrodden is ended. Ismus? Yes, Master. I promised to take you along on my next visit to the leaders of the Northern Bands. Next month, you said? It'll be sooner than that, much sooner. It's urgent that I inspect a certain Galilean who may be useful. So you can quit posing as a gardener and start acting as a spice merchant servant. Good. Anything's better than gardening. What's wrong, Simon? My dagger-carrying days are over. Your friend's waiting on the roof. You'll sleep cooler up there. Wait. When you took the zealot oath, you took it for life. I swore to love my country, to work for her freedom. I still will, in the way I think best. And that is? Each night I pray that Judea may be freed. Pray? A hundred years of prayers haven't loosened our chains. There's seven centuries of hate and plots and bloodshed. Perhaps our hope lies in forgiveness and not in revenge. You sound like a follower of the Nazarene. Because I've become one. Oh, some rumors about him reached Jerusalem, but you know city dwellers. Anything that happens outside the wall can't possibly be important. But the farther north we came, the more we heard about him. The wildest tales of curings, of healings, the driving out of demons. Half of Galilee is convinced he can do incredible things. He can. I witnessed several. Witnessed? No wonder your message said he draws men like a lodestone. The humble, the weak. The all but hopeless. Zadok, our, our search is ended. The Nazarene is everything we need for a figurehead. If a man who preaches love your enemy can be persuaded to join the Brotherhood. Give me time to gain his confidence and I'll have him thinking that revolt against Caesar is his own idea. Why he has no more sense of intrigue than a child. Have you heard of the aides he's chosen? Four fishermen, I'm told. Exactly. Four callous-handed scholars in the art of gutting fish. Now, would a man with the slightest knowledge of politics surround himself with a retinue like that? When I first heard of it... Today he added a new one. A tax collector. He dines with him tonight. At the home of Matthew ben Helpfi, the Levite. The ex-carpenter with his ex-fisherman, supping with an ex-publican and half of the other tax collectors of Capernaum. Tell me, when our people were conquered before, in centuries past, what kept them together? By their loyalty, pride, and their faith in God. And who led them to freedom? The Lord and the great leaders he sent. Today they have neither. They look to the throne for a Hezekiah, a Solomon, and they find Herod Antipas. A weakling libertine puppet. And they turn to the temple and see another Roman pawn, Caiaphas, high priest, by order of Caesar. High priest. High traitor to Israel. Making a mockery of his robes to enrich his purse. No, the people have despaired of help from the temple or the throne. Leaving only their faith in the Lord. Faith, but little hope of ever being part of his kingdom. Not with Caiaphas demanding temple taxes that only a few can pay. 
And now the Nazarene appears, offering redemption to all who repent, salvation to all who simply believe. Rome recruits her armies by offering mere earthly loot. How much more this carpenter offers. And they believe him. Men believe what they want to believe. Actually, there's only one thing that might make the people hesitate to follow him. One thing? The humility born of a hundred years of slavery. The humbleness that might make them say the kingdom is for others, not for me. I am too lowly. I am unworthy. But the Nazarene, whose cleverness you deride, proves that all men are worthy by the example of his chosen companions, four fishermen and a publican. It's possible I underestimated him. It's also conceivable that you might have uh, read too deep a meaning into a thoughtless act. Perhaps. Perhaps. In either case, you agree he can still be useful. If he can be guided and controlled. He can be. He will be. It must have been about that time when we crossed to the far side of Galilee. Throngs followed him on foot along the northern shore. In the early morning, the master went up the mountain to pray. I waited farther down the mount with the others. And when his prayers were ended, he came to us. And from among us, he chose 12. James Bar Zebedee and his brother John, my brother Simon, called Peter, and myself, Matthew the publican, young Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas the doubter, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, the man Simon who had been a zealot, and Judas of Cariath. Judas? And you I have chosen, not alone that you may be with me, but that you may go forth and preach of the kingdom of heaven. To you will be given authority over the spirits of evil, the power to cure disease, and heal all manner of sickness. You are the light of the world. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven. For so men persecuted the prophets who were before you.
master this gentleman. Simon, a thousand greetings. Your kindness overwhelms me. What good fortune brings you to Jerusalem? I came with Jesus of Nazareth. He's here in the city since last week. Just you and the Nazarene? And the other followers, there are 12 of us. Every day we're here, Jesus speaks in the temple court. I, I wish that you would go to him, listen to him. I? Yes. Why, so that I could tell the Brotherhood how to free Israel by learning to love our conquerors? It's written that whoever sheds the blood of man by man shall his blood be I shed. I know the scriptures. I know also that if all Judea followed your rabbi's preachment of peace, our future would be doomed. Or saved. Simon, you've chosen your way. I am dedicated to mine. Even though we travel different paths, the road that leads to the top of Nebo first climbs the foothills, hills so high that men mistake them for the pinnacle itself. You ascend the hill toward a goal of earthly political freedom for our people. It hides the greater goal beyond, the spiritual salvation of all mankind toward which he strives. You may find we travel the same road. Simon. Why are you so sure of him? Do you think he's the Messiah come to Earth? A year ago, he was a village carpenter. Yet he has such knowledge, power beyond any earthly explanation, that all men who hear him trust and believe him. All men? All men who really know him. He's at the temple now. Will you go there with me? Not today. Yes, Master? Bruni, I have an errand for you. Are you angry with me because on the Sabbath I made a man's whole body down? The spice merchant sends his greeting. Tell him I'll visit him as soon as I can. He's waiting for you now. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Thank you. Here, my friend. Welcome. My home is yours. Your hospitality honors me. The boy said you wanted me at once. Something wrong? The very question I was about to ask you. I heard you arrived in Bethany a week ago. I expected you to seek me out at once. Well, I plan to come tonight. It isn't too easy to slip away from the others without arousing their suspicions. Do they suspect you? Well, on the contrary. They've just selected a guardian of our purse. Keeper of the funds. Excellent. And uh, the Nazarene, what progress have you made with him? He chose me one of the 12. Yes, you wrote me about that some months ago. Have you won him over to our cause, persuaded him to take the zealot oath? I haven't so much as tried. Hmm? No, speaking too soon might have ruined everything. That's the only reason. What other could there be? I've heard incredible things about him. That he has supernatural gifts. That he can persuade all men to his way of thinking. And you thought that, that I? The possibility occurred to me. Oh. Oh. How do you explain his abilities? By his own words. That all powers and wonders come from God. Can we explain the sun or the stars? Or the miracle of a sea becoming a flower? No. We accept. So, I accept the uh, abilities of Jesus bar Joseph. And if the credulous choose to think him uh, touched by divinity... And I suppose when the time comes... Uh, and when it does, we'll make them think so. We'll have the Brotherhood spread the word that he's divine, that he's a messiah. A messiah? Why not? And once a revolt had succeeded... I forbid it. He will be useful to us as a mortal leader only, if he can be won over to our cause. He will be. When? 
I haven't wasted my time. First, I had to win his confidence. Now I'll begin to offer casual suggestions on unimportant matters. Later, I'll advise on more vital affairs. By the time we actually need... You're sure you can succeed? All I need is enough time. I met with the High Council of the Brotherhood two nights ago. They sent orders to every zealot leader to lie low. No raids, no forays, until Tiberius believes all Israel is subdued. Then, if revolt strikes at Gaul or Carthage or on the Rhine, and he draws troops from these garrisons here. Yes. In the meantime, a leader who teaches love and peace can increase his falling without suspicions. If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. If you continue in my word, you are my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. This is really the prophet. He might even be the Christ. Is the Christ to come from Galilee? It is written that the Christ will be descended from David. David comes from Bethlehem. All you want is taxes and tithes. He offers eternal life. You don't care if we starve, you Roman bootlicker. Roman bootlicker, what good are you to us? Yes, my lord, Annas. Arrest this troublemaker. Take him to care for us. Yes, my lord. It was that rabbi from Nazareth trying to stir up the crowd again. The one who's caused so much trouble in Galilee. There's always trouble in Galilee. But now he's starting it here. And you can end it. The Lord's. Where? Where's your prisoner? We, we couldn't arrest him. Couldn't arrest him? But no man has ever spoken like this man. So now he's led you astray also. Go, go. Well, at least the Nazarene is gone. And of more importance than ever, thanks to you. Important? Penniless wandering teacher? Wherever he wanders, the people listen and follow. People? Yes, the people. The ones we must control as Rome wants them controlled. Or be destroyed ourselves. If you are so fearful of the Nazarene, send out a stronger guard. Have him dragged back, lashed, locked in a dungeon. No. He must be silenced more cleverly than that, and in his own Galilee, if he returns there. Who do we know in Capernaum that we can trust? Tell me, Rabbi, this heaven you praise, will it be the same for all of us? Truly, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones to Open the way. Step aside. Be better for him. Step aside, I say. Have it. Keep going. I'll be late. Ah, the woman of Magdala. Now the Galilean's audience is complete. He won't open the way, mistress. I've never read in the scriptures. Temptations to sin are sure to come. But woe to him by whom they come. And yet I tell you, if a man has a hundred sheep, and one of them is gone astray. Does he not leave the ninety and nine on the hills and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly he rejoices more over it than over the ninety and nine that never went astray. Hi, 
Rabbi, I've been listening to you with interest, great interest. I want to seek your advice, privately. If you and your friends here would honor me by dining tonight, if you can. That will do. That will do. You were in the market square this morning. Yes, mistress. So that's how you waste your time, gaping at handsome young orators. That one seemed quite a spellbinder. Who is he? Jesus Bar Joseph of Nazareth. Oh, yes. I've heard tales about him. What is he? A teacher? A physician? A mystic? Or a madman who thinks himself a prophet? Not a madman, mistress. Some call him rabbi. Others term him master. I've heard it whispered that he... he might be the Messiah. But he speaks of himself as the son of man like anyone else. And you learned all of that from listening to him once? I've... heard him several times. He seemed to have some great appeal for silly girls and stupid old women. What can it be? He... He brings us hope. Hope that if we truly repent our sins and have faith, we may be part of God's kingdom. That's an easy promise to make. He means it. And he knows if you could look into his eyes. Everyone's someone to him, not just a, another face in a crowd. And he has such kindness, such understanding, such sympathy for us all. For everyone? Oh, yes, mistress. For the rich and the poor, for the powerful and the weak, for the good and... and the lame. You almost said the wicked, didn't you? For everyone, mistress. You're such a good girl, aren't you? Dutiful, devout, innocent, piously slaving your life away to support your crippled mother. Well, I could have been a mealy mouth sit by the fire, too, but I chose to live my life and enjoy it. How many of these has your purity bought for you? Does piety have a sweeter scent than incense and ointment? Heavenly crown had rubies and sapphires to compare with these. Here, put them on. Feel their caress against your throat. Learn what your sniveling sanctity has made you forfeit. And then tell me you're wiser and smarter than I am. Oh, Clois, I'm... I'm sorry. Here. Take them, keep them, they're yours. You must. I order you to. You don't have to keep them. Sell them if you want. I won't mind. Use the money to... to hire the Egyptian physician to cure your mother. My mother's no longer crippled. Not since the day the Nazarene touched her with his hand. I can agree with all that you say about love your enemies as well as your neighbors among our own people. But do you mean love all our enemies? Even the Roman tyrants who have enslaved us? If all men love their fellow men, there would be no tyrants and no slaves. No, I suppose not, but until that day comes. When it does, 
There'll be no problem about loving Romans. They'll all be dead. Take the procurators that Rome sent to rule us. Coponius, he wasn't too bad, nor Marcus, but... But honestly, now, can you say one good word about Pontius Pilate? The sword-rattling, coarse soldier promoted... <laughs> Who are you? What do you want? How dare you come here? Get out of my home. Simon, I have something to say to you. What is it, Rabbi? A certain creditor had two debtors. One owed him 500 denarii, the other 50. When they could not pay him, he forgave them both. Now, which of them will love him more? The one, I suppose, to whom he forgave more. You have judged rightly. Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not anoint my head with oil. But she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much. But he who is forgiven little, loves little. Master. Master. Your sins are forgiven. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. day on, Mary of Magdala became one of us. Where the master led us, she followed. Devoted, tireless, eager to serve. And as summer turned to fall, we journeyed southward to Jerusalem. We were made welcome at a home in Bethany. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. But how are we to find that kingdom? How, Lazarus? Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Mary. All things are possible to God, if you truly believe. Uh, Mary, oh, you pardon, Master, but there's so much to be done, more than I can see to alone. The wine to be poured and the meat to be cut, and the servants are all... Master, don't you care if my sister has left me to serve alone? Martha, Martha, you're anxious and troubled about many things. Only one thing is needful. Mary has chosen the good portion, which shall not be taken from her. Master, you say, ask and we will receive. How shall we ask? Will you teach us to pray as John taught his disciples? When you pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth, 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. But our stay was short. The time of the Passover was drawing near, and the master planned to join the throngs that traveled to the temple in Jerusalem. I passed through Capernaum before you left. I was headed north. You were all instructed to cease harassing the Romans. But one man thought himself more important than the Brotherhood. Barabbas' camp in the hills had changed since I saw it last. What once had been a refuge for the persecuted had now become a lair of bandits. His men had captured a Roman supply caravan. The loot included a half dozen skins of strong wine. Men of Israel, patriots pledged to free Judea, turned to brigands and swine under your leadership, Barabbas. They'll be fit again tomorrow, as soon as their heads clear. Hey, eh, Nicator? Mm, <laughs> let them have their fun. They fought and bled and killed enough Romans. Not for freedom, for gold and jewels and stolen tents, soft cushions. Master Zadok, Master Spice Virgin, a toast. <laughs> A salute to the Brotherhood! Sorry. Jug slip. Didn't mean to spill no wine, just wanted to drink with an old friend. You were ordered to avoid conflict with the Romans. I built a following by giving orders, not taking them. Men have come from all of Palestine to join me, because they know the name Barabbas means courage and not appeasement. Appeasement? You were told to lie low as part of a plan to take the Romans off guard. When? When everything was ready, and not until then. Not until then. That's what they told my father in his youth, and his father before him. It's easy to sit in your fine house in Jerusalem and cry, wait, wait. But when you've seen your village burned as I have done, seen your wife and children cut down by Roman swords. The decision of the High Council is a command. Suppose I choose to ignore the command of the timid graybeards. Suppose I decide to attack the Roman outpost tomorrow and then sweep southward, gathering an army as I go. I forbid it! When you and your men have regained your senses, return to your homes. Those are your orders, by command of the council. Prepare the donkeys, we're starting back. Make it Guide our guests back to the caravan road. Ah, uh, don't be mad at Master Zadok. He's a good man. He's a beautiful gardener. I was his gardener once when I was hiding from the Romans.
Can this be the famous Barabbas, the great leader who so graciously accepted my gift? What gift? The last loot you'll ever steal. Six skins of drugged wine. <laughs> Take my advice, you'll stay away from Jerusalem until Barabbas is executed and forgotten. We don't want your counsel, just your help. Help with what? Freeing Barabbas. With only the two of you? Oh, it may be possible. You know the procurator's custom of freeing a prisoner on feast days. Yes, but hardly Barabbas. It may be Barabbas if the people demand it. I've sent messengers to assemble the Brotherhood, but some may not get there in time. We'll have to fill the courtyard around the judgment seat. And that'll be your job. Mine? Yours? With the army of pilgrims who follow your Galilean. You can't convince them to add their voices to ours, can't you? I doubt it. But you will try. His followers aren't an army. They're just people who want to be near him. Well, they would obey him, wouldn't they? Make a talk. And if you wanted to persuade him, it's just That's possible. That's enough. Go give the boy his supper. He hasn't eaten yet. Surly brute. What's wrong, Judas? Nothing. You can persuade him to help by now, can't you? And on any matter, worth the effort. Two years ago, you thought he'd be easy to control. A year ago, you wanted to use him as a false messiah. Now you hesitate to so much as ask a favor of him. Why? You admit that Barabbas flaunts orders and jeers at authority. Now, is he worth the freeing, even if it could be done? He is, thanks to Roman stupidity. They paraded him the length of Palestine, made a captive hero of him, a symbol to the people. What are the man I've spent weary hours to cultivate? Does he become secondary to a cutthroat bandit from the hills? Never mind. We'll have need of him. The urgent task now is to free Barabbas, and your duty is to help. I'll do what I can. The time will come toward the end of the Passover week. Thursday, perhaps Friday. Get in touch with me as soon as you reach Jerusalem. I will. Good fortune. There's a man I'd never count on. Then you'd be wrong. Men take the zealot oath for a score of reasons. Adventure, revenge, an ideal, the hope of gain. But Judas is bound closest of all. He's possessed by a demon. A demon? The devil of ambition, the lust for power and authority. He wants to be a leader? He'd sell his soul for it. But he knows he hasn't the spark. Now his aim is to be the power behind the throne. Judas, where have you been? Why, just outside the village to visit a friend. Why? The master and the others have gone. I waited to tell you. Gone where? To Bethany. Come on, if we hurry, we can overtake them. A messenger came from Mary and Martha. Lazarus is ill, very ill. It was good of you to come, Master. But we could not get word to you in time. My brother... The day the messenger left... Oh, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Your brother will rise again. I know. In the resurrection, at the last day. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. Oh, my Lord, my Lord. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. Where have you laid him? Take away the stone. 
Lord, he's been dead for four days. Did I not tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? heard me. I know that thou hearest me always, but I have said this on account of the people standing by, that they may believe that thou didst send me. Lazarus, come forth. Unbind him and let him go. It's incredible. saw it. Authority over death itself. No mortal ever had such power. Not until now. Could he be more than mortal? Not long ago, he asked the 12 of us who people thought him to be. Andrew said they compared him to John the Baptist. Young Philip said a risen prophet, Elijah or Jeremiah. And then he asked us who we thought him to be. Peter was the only one to answer. He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. The son of God. Oh, they were Peter's words, not mine. I've lived, traveled, eaten, and slept with Jesus bar Joseph for more than two years. And I've studied him more closely than any man. He's learned, but he's human, mortal, flesh and blood, just like you and me. When Briar scratches his legs, he, he bleeds. When the day is hot, he thirsts. He hungers, he sweats, he tires, he laughs, he cries. Would God or the Son of God have such weaknesses? I suppose not. You know I would not. No, Zadok, we haven't discovered the Messiah. But we have found more than we sought. Tonight, his name is on every tongue in Bethany and by tomorrow, sweet Jerusalem. A city filled by the devout and just longing for a leader they can honor and respect. For a David. For a Solomon. For a new king of the Jews. A new king? Yes, king with all Israel united behind him. King by demand of all Judea. Now the people are ready. They're like tinder waiting for the flame. Do we have enough of the brotherhood to supply the spark? A new king of the Jews? It can be done. Would he be willing to take the risk? He will be. You're certain? I'm certain. Peter, where are you going with that? We're taking him to the master. He sent us to get him. He's going to carry the master into the city, aren't you, Long Ears? The master can't ride through the streets in a thing like this. After all the roads he's trudged on foot, why not? Steady there, boy, steady. Ears up, forward march. Look, we've got to stop him. He can't ride to the temple and that. Isn't there a prophecy about this sort of beast? Something about a king coming humbly? Yes. Yes, there is. In the scroll of Zechariah. Rejoice, Jerusalem, thy king cometh. He is just and having salvation, lowly, and riding upon an ass. You remember, he planted all along. 
Strange he didn't remind you of it. Well, he must have thought of it after I left. I'd better join the others. Judas. Look, the hour's come. I've You're got... hiding something. It's nothing. Nothing of importance. The important. Nazarene. He refused the terms you offered. I offered no terms. I told him nothing. He might have refused, and now I can't. Not when the crowds hail him as king. Not when they demand he take the throne. No man could refuse then. No man. Judas. Judas! What is it? What's the excitement? Who's coming? It's Jesus of Nazareth. No, it's King Herod. No, it's a new king of the Jews. King of the Jews. Yes, it's a new king of the Jews. Hail the new king of the Jews. Hail the new king of the Jews. There he is. It's Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. It's Jesus of Nazareth. Hail the King of the Jews! Hail the King of the Jews! Here comes your new King of the Jews. Here comes your King of the Jews. King of the Jews. Hail to the King of the Jews. I warned you. I warned you. My men await your orders, my lord. Your orders, my lord. No orders. Look at it. Yeah. just looked at the temple with tears in his eyes. Tears? Yes, my lord. And then? And then he went away. What is his plan? What is his plan? One gesture. One cry of follow me and Jerusalem would have been his. Don't blame the Nazarene. It was our fault. Ours? I did my part, so did the others. But a handful. We needed a hundred men. We needed a leader, not some weeping milksop. Now, he is a leader. Enough. We tried and we failed. Let's not compound the failure by arguing among ourselves. Sorry. It's just that I can't help thinking what a, a day of triumph this could have been. I have a long walk to Bethany. At least we made some progress. We started the people thinking of him as their king. You start preparing plans to rally the men again. After the others arrive, and I'll be gone to help again tomorrow or the day after. Rally them again? Is he out of his mind?
my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Who is he? The guards. Where are the guards? No, no, I tell you. But you can have him jailed for such an act. Jail? He must be ignored or destroyed completely. And only Pilate can sentence a man to death. Then, if we could trick him into making a treasonous statement... It was tried. Oh, but in Capernaum... You think that shrewder men might... I would suggest, if he returns to you. A teacher, we know that you speak and teach rightly and show no partiality and truly teach the way of God. But tell us, is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? If he says don't give those sword swingers, we'll arrest him for treason. If he says give, he'll have the whole crowd against him. Come, teacher, what's your answer? Show me your coin. Whose likeness and inscription are on it? Why, Cetus. Then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. How the Nazarene made fools of Cavus's pet toadies? You mean the argument about the coin? Yes. Oh, he really singed their beards. The story's being told all over the city. Yesterday, he proved his courage by driving out the courtyard parasite single-handed. Now the masses will know he's brilliant as well as brave. Sorry I couldn't get here to help with the preparations till now. How are they coming? Some of the men have arrived, but not enough to fill the courtyard. The courtyard? Oh, no, I didn't mean that. I meant to arouse the people again. Judas. In a way, it might be best to wait for as many of the Brotherhood as we can. On the other hand, we mustn't lose the people's excitement. Perhaps the last of the feast days would be right. Or do you think it should be done sooner? Not for a year at the earliest. A year? Maybe two, maybe never. But that's ridiculous, insane. You heard how they cheered him. They followed him to the very gate of the temple. And they saw him weep and turn away. Well, they remember that. You did this. You insisted upon putting Barabbas the head of the master. I didn't, but I would have. Judas! Now you listen to me, all of you. You're throwing away a kingdom. We can't stir them up again, and more easily than before. And no risk, no risk at all. Why, a blind man can see the Caiaphas fears a Nazarene. He doesn't dare order his arrest. If Caiaphas were fool enough to arrest him, we could rouse the people. Then they'd have a cause to fight for, a hero to free, his enemies to destroy. Now they have neither. And Caiaphas is shrewd enough to know the dangerous past. A wise man faces facts, only a fool denies them. And only the cowardly stop one step short of victory. All right. Give up hope, all of you. But I won't. Not now. <laughs> Stop one step short of victory. The first day when the crowds hailed him king, his courage failed. He was afraid that you and the procurator had laid a trap. And now? Now he maneuvers to lull your fears. And when he's certain you're off guard, he'll order his followers to strike. At the temple? At you? Do. 
while the zealots assassinate Herod. Then, as high priest and king, he'll be in a position to bargain with Pilate. If you've been as close to him as you say, why are you betraying him? I trusted him. I thought he was Messiah. Now I see him for what he is. Will you repeat all this to the procurator? No. Why not, if it's the truth? Because you'll seize Jesus. Pilate would, would slaughter him and his followers to the last man. I'll guarantee your safety. Mine, but not theirs. Now, they're good men. Just fooled by him as I was. He alone is your threat. Arrest him, imprison him, and the threat has ended. We have no charge against him without your testimony. And if his zealot friends learned that I betrayed him? No. No, we'll hold to the terms I named. Full secrecy and enough money to see me to Egypt. No one need know if we take you to Pilate. Pilate will. I trust no Romans. A man doesn't sell his life for a handful of silver? No. Not his own. Ten. Twenty. Thirty. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I am not speaking of you all. I know whom I have chosen. It is that the scripture may be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I tell you this now before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you, will betray me. Master, is it I? Is Lord, it I? I, 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 I? Lord, who is it? Is it I, Master? It is he to whom I shall give this morsel when I have dipped it. that you are going to do. Do quickly. Judas, where are you going? Shh, the master. Thou is the son of man glorified. And in him, God is glorified. Little children, yet a little while am I with you. You will seek me. Now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you you also love one another. Blessed art thou, Lord God, King of the world, 
who hast brought forth bread from the earth. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Ten men would be enough. I prefer to prevent mistakes and double betrayals. Then tell your officer the upper chamber of the inn, or if they've left, in the garden. Garden? The one called Gethsemane. It's the Nazarene's custom to pray out of doors after his evening meal. Now what? You go with them to identify the Nazarene. Oh, no, I won't. We agree that just to make certain there are no misunderstandings. <laughs> Father, if thou art willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. with me one hour. Master, we meant to. Spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Hey, Master, 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 what are they doing? Halt! Oh! You've done your work. On your way. But why did you bring him here? He was to be taken to the temple for trial by the Sanhedrin. You men go back to the temple. Turn, forward, Who? Who is it? Judas, Judas is scared. Into your clothes, all of you, wake up. Okay, of us arrested the Nazarene. No, when? Tonight, within the last hour? You must be mistaken. It'd be a fool to do such a thing now. No, I tricked him into it, lied to him, convinced him that Jesus planned his death. Oh, don't stand there, Katie. This is our chance. Go awaken your men and send the shoddy through the streets. At this hour? Oh, don't argue. Act now, fast. Go ahead, order them to obey. I've met your conditions. The master's in danger. Now the people can free a captive and strike it as persecutors. So arouse the people and cry out that the king of the Jews is held prisoner at Annas' home. Anna's home? Yes, Anna's home. That's no threat. They can do nothing there but question him. No, I convince him he's dangerous. They'll have him in a dungeon before the night's over. If they do, we'll act, not before. But they will. I know they will. We fooled the people once. We dare not risk it again. At least you can prepare and alert the Brotherhood. Bruni, go with Judas. Keep watch at Anna's house. If anything happens, send word back with the boy. Baban, Shomai, 
Where can your men have them meet in the garden? We may need message bearers. For what? To spread the word that Galilean weeps again? They asked me if I knew him. Three times. Well, where are they taking him? To the Sanhedrin? No, they've already tried him. Caiaphas, Annas, a chosen handful of their tools. The very men that have made a mockery of everything sacred. They call him guilty. Guilty? Of what? Blasphemy. Sedition. Because he calls God his father. Taking to Pilate to be sentenced to death. And I denied knowing him. I denied knowing him. What's so important about it? Why can't it wait till a decent hour? Something about tomorrow being their Sabbath, Excellency. So if it can be done today... Sabbaths, holy days, feast days. They waste more time on one god than we do on a thousand. His Excellency Pontius Pilate, Procurator of Judea. This is the prisoner? Yes, Excellency. Where's the delegation? Waiting outside, Excellency. Bring them in. They beg that Your Excellency come out to them. Something about entering a Gentile's dwelling during their Passover. They rouse me at dawn and expect me to come to them? Sorry, Sorry, apologies for your your this man you brought, of what is he accused? Why, he claims to be the son of God. Oh, yes. He's a false messiah. He even claims to be the Christ. Yes, he calls himself the if king of the If he were not an evildoer, we would not have handed him over. Rome has no interest in your Christs or messiahs. Take him to yourself. Judge him by your law. But it is not lawful for us to sentence a man to death. If your excellency will merely endorse this writ of our judgment. Wait here. What is strange? Why should he do this such a thing when we told This is the man who caused that clamor four or five days ago? Yes, Excellency, but nothing came of it. Something did. Enough for Caiaphas to want him executed, or to want me to execute him. Are you the king of the Jews? Do you say this of your own accord? Or did others say it to you about me? Am I a Jew? Your own chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight. So you are a king? You say I am the king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Truth? Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. What is the truth?
I've questioned the prisoner. I find no guilt in the man. But he stirs up the people. He preaches sedition, revolution. He has spoken against all laws. Throughout all Judea, from Galilee to this very city. From Galilee? Is he a Galilean? Yes, yes. he's known as Jesus of Nazareth. And he comes under Herod's jurisdiction, not mine. Herod. But your excellency, yes, Centurion. Yes, Excellency. Take the prisoner to the tetrod. What is what? Any move of Caiaphas's may be a trap. I loathe him, detest him. He loathes it, hates me. Plots night and day to discredit me with Rome. He knows Tiberius ordered me to keep the peace at any cost. Yet he asked me to execute a man whose followers may revolt. Then why didn't you release the man? So Caiaphas could send word to Caesar that I'd freed a man who had set himself up as king in defiance of Rome? <laughs> I see. Passing the problem on to Herod was a clever move. A statesman's move. If I had a free hand, no order to keep the peace, I'd order the Galilee and beheaded. All his followers with him. <laughs> then I'd turn the cohorts loose on the temple. On Caiaphas, when all the fat cats is around him. Hmm. Well, did Herod find the man guilty? No, Excellency, the prisoner refused to answer the Tetrarch's questions. So Herod mocked him, draped him in a torn purple robe and sent him back. Back? But he's a Galilean. So I told him, Excellency, but Herod claims the crimes were committed in Judea, in your jurisdiction. So Herod plots against me too. Please, my lord. It may be that Herod fears the same things as you do. Reckless dogs. <clears throat> more? More good news? Only that Caiaphas has joined the delegation awaiting your excellency's decision. Your Excellency, we are honored by your presence. No doubt. You brought me the man as one who incites the people. I examined him. I do not find him guilty of your charges. But your oh, Excellency, no. he no. must be. And neither did Herod. Nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will, therefore, order him to be chastised and released. No, no, no. 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 Silence in the name of Caesar. Cornelius, carry out my order. Your Excellency, this is not fair. You're expecting you. He must be executed. Quick to the temple. Bring back every man you can. Hurry. I ordered him lashed. Nothing more. Whose idea was this? Well, it was a sort of jest, Your Excellency. Uh, they're calling him King of the Jews, so one of the men made him a crown. Remove it. No. No, wait. This is a trap. Excellency? If this is a trap, I'll make Caiaphas step into it for me. Of all the prisoners in the cells, which one is the vilest? Barabbas. Barabbas? Bandit, cutthroat, murderer. Bring him here. Bring him here. Here, Barabbas, they've taken him from his cell to the Praetorium. 
Come on, the men. There's no time. You must go yourselves. On your way up. Yes, Excellency. Caiaphas says you claim to be the son of God. Where are you from? You won't speak to me? Don't you know I have the power to release you or crucify you? You would have no power unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me to you has the greater sin. Now I'll make Caiaphas step into his own trap before witnesses. I bring him out to you that you may know I find no crime in him. Behold, the man. Thank God you're here. Have you brought the men? The few we could. If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself king sets himself against Caesar. every Passover for one prisoner to be released. Shall I free this one, whom you hailed as your king, or this robber and murderer known as Barabbas? Barabbas! Free Barabbas! Free the Nazarene! What shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? Crucify him! Why? What evil has he done? of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Release Barabbas. Better, far better, 
that one man should die and the peace of Israel be maintained. I have sinned. I have sinned and betrayed innocent blood. See to it yourself. I have sinned. You can perform miracles. Do one. He claims he can save others. Let's see if he can save himself. Save yourself now, if you can. <laughs> <laughs> Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Don't waste your breath forgiving them. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself. Save us. Don't you fear God? You and I were justly condemned. We are receiving the due rewards for our deeds, but... This man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Judas been found. What does the sign say? It says, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Pilate had it put there as a jeer at Caiaphas. You'll never know how close to the truth that jest came. You're not allowed here. Go back. This is a Nazarene's mother. second. Father, 
into thy hands. I commit my spirit. It is finished. And so he died and proved himself a mortal man, not a divine messenger, not the Messiah that, that some people thought he might have been. And for these two days since his death, Pilate's cohorts have combed the city seeking the leaders of a revolt that never took place. And a Roman guard stands watch over a sealed tomb that contains the body of the man who might have been our king. The guard has been removed. Mm -hmm. Nazarene's body was stolen. When? The woman went to the tomb this morning for the ritual anointment. The stone was rolled aside, the body gone. They came back to tell us, trying to convince themselves that he had risen like Lazarus. Talking about some vision they saw or, or thought they saw. My brother went to the tomb. There was nothing there but the grave cloths. That's the story. Now you know why you were summoned why we failed. I understand. I must be getting back to my companions. And I to my men. My thanks for your help, my friend. And mine for the shelter. You go toward the Damascus Gate. In that direction. Some of us will go with you. leave you. May we meet again someday. Under better circumstances for all of us. I'm sorry I didn't know the Nazarene as you did. He was a brilliant man and a brave one. We may never find another to equal him. I and some of the others believed he was the Messiah. Once I thought so too. What if he had been the Messiah? He wasn't. He died. Well, suppose he had been. What then? Then Simon would have been right when he said we'd both traveled the same road. You and I to the foothills, and he to the greater pinnacle beyond. Farewell, my friend. May the Lord watch between me and thee. While we are absent one from the other. to find you. Where have you been? Hiding from the Romans. It's all right now. Have you decided what we'll do? Not yet. We'll talk about that later. When it's safe, we'll all go back to Galilee together. Galilee? It won't be easy telling those who stayed behind. Just a week ago, we came into the city with all the people hailing him as king.
peace be with you. Master. Can't be. Master. No. But it is a spirit. Why are you troubled? Why do questionings rise in your hearts? Master. Is it really you? See my hands and my feet. That it is I myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit has not flesh and bone as you see that I have. Master. The Messiah. The Messiah. Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sin should be preached in his name to all nations.